So these are uh, as many cases. I, oh, there's no timer on there. So as many cases I can get through in <laughs> 10 minutes, which are related to CSR-like phenotype, just to re-emphasize my talk. Um, so this is a 37-year-old uh, highly myopic female, poor vision in the right eye for years, um, and was previously diagnosed in the left eye with recurrent CSR. Um, and this is the color pictures, the right eye with a chororetinal scar, and the left eye with some sort of pallor at the macula. And this is the uh, red freeze and the fluorescein, showing some sort of oozy leak uh, at the macula in an <coughs> ovoid shape. Any thoughts from the audience? So just the history may help. So right scar, left history of recurrent CSR. Anything else you include in the fundus appearance? No? OK. Well, the red freeze. So this is the uh, OCT. And they were referred by a colleague who had given them anti-VEGF. So remember what I said about double layer sign? Not that I like the term. You got it there in the arrow, and the fluid here had multiple injections, and it got to this point, um, but the rest of the fluid wasn't going away, but the vision had improved. And we had also had a debate about when you stop treating these things. So this covers lots of points in two, two or three talks this morning. So what do we do here? Anyone? Keep treating? Stop treating? The angio is up here. It's there. Is the sclera thick or something else? Is the patient different? symptomatic? Yep, okay. Mm -hmm. Is the sclera thick is a good observation, but it's not totally correct, but in the right ballpark. Mm -hmm. you're, you're warm. Keep going looking below. Mm -hmm. We're talking, remember, we're talking about, I was talking about pachychoroid this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the reverse of pachychoroid? What's, what's Greek for thin? Leptochoroid. Le now well, let's talk, yeah, let's just use the term leptochoroid. <laughs> so that's a leptochoroid, isn't it? It's not the sclera's thick, the choroid's thin. So if you've got a thin choroid, what, why, why do people have such leptochoroids? We'll have to... Yeah, high myo. Okay, so do we carry on treating? We're talking about myopic CNV and we talk about pachychoroid. Yep. Anything else? Okay. No. So, what makes you feel that this is CSR? I'm not. I, I'm. Um, so, I there, it's not res responding. So, we know that some C, some patients with neovascular AMD, mm -hmm. the fluid just persists. Okay. Is should we stop treatment or should we carry on treating? So, this is before treatment. Fuzzy border, double layer sign. This is after treatment. So remember, we had a history of recurrent CSR, the hist leading you through it. What, anything else to clinch the diagnosis? One test answers this diagnosis. Why, Very, why didn't you do an angiocytosis if there is an We didn't. This was, I think, initially we didn't do it. But it, it was a CNV and it responded. But mm -hmm. if we had, I, I, it would have shown a, a net there if we had had one. So simple other test. One simple test, and you'll get the diagnosis. Well, ICG I've given you all the clues. Mm -hmm. Do you have an so, ICG? Um, do we have an autofluorescence there? No. So mm -hmm. that's the fluorescein. Red freeze. And the clues are there. No? Okay. So they've given more anti-VEGF injections. Still look the same. But... The clue is this. Um, so look at the shape of, let me get, get this out here. This ball might be lost. Yes. What would you do? Why, isn't it, why doesn't it look like a dome? Is it a dome? Yeah, but there's a thick, uh, thick sclera. Okay, you're getting there. So, so it's this. So you've got a horizontal, so not all domes are domes. They can be ridges. So if you're walking across a ridge, it looks flat. 
If you're going in that direction, it looks flat. If you're going the other direction, it looks steep. So you, when you, you just do a six-line scan. You scan the other direction. In fact, the clue was in the pallor. There's a horizontal uh, pale ridge. Mm -hmm. And so the reason it had recurrent CSR was it actually had dome maculopathy, and they developed CNV. And you can see beautifully the slight and slightly thickened sclera at the apex of the dome, a slightly thickened choroid at the apex of the dome, and the thick sclera. The vision had come back, and they had a history of recurrent CSR, and they were reading again. So it kind of held treatment. They have re reactivated multiple times since. But anyway, Nice, that's just a little clue. Dome, not all domes are domes. It could be a ridge. In fact, there could be angles. And you get these at the edge of staphylomas. Any acute change in shape. Four minutes left. Right, next case. <laughs> oh, we stopped. We just monitored them as per C myopic CNV. Um, and they get, they've had multiple repeat treatments. The patient knows if they have a drop in vision, then another injection comes straight back. I still live in fear. You can see how thin that uh, choroid is in macula. Mm. So, um, and the patient's still reading. And so if we can get their vision... So again, it's that point. When they get the CNV, something alters in the constituents of the fluid in the subretinal fluid, and their vision drops. You inject them, the vision picks up, even though the fluid is still there, like a, a CSR patient. And they've had it for years, and they don't have distortion. Sure. So... Um, no, so, no, in, in the study that we... Yeah, no, so we don't say it's thick. Remember, these are myopic patients, and the relative to the... So, in the study that um, uh, Marie Restory, the ultrasound from Orfield, did with, with uh, Marie Helen, our fellow, we did ultrasounds. Um, there was localised thickening under the fovea, but they're myopes, so they're, it's thin anyway, so it's relative to the other... I, um, the, the surrounding sclera. So the, we hypothesized in that paper when the eye is growing, there's an internal control system, and it may be the eye trying to metropize itself by self-correcting, uh, which can, you can do in animal models. So this is the second patient. Um, uh, patient was complaining of slightly blurred vision in the left eye. So it has parallels to the last case and what I was talking about this morning. And the clues are in the color picture again. Remember that horizontal pale area. And the patient was complaining of uh, blurred vision in the left eye. This is the autofluorescence. And this is the OCT of each corresponding eye. Thoughts? Any thoughts about that? The doing a vertical cut didn't add anything to it. I'll add that. Before you ask. It, was, it, didn't, it wasn't domed in the other direction. Sorry? I uh, can't remember. About 50-ish? I think about 50 male, 50-year-old male. Or maybe 45-year-old male. That sort of, and Caucasian. Okay, and then there we are. And we'll have another cut further up. Yep. Anything more than that? So packy choroid because that's mm. thicker than so if you look at that internal control, it's locally thick though. Is it thick mm. all the way or locally thick? Sorry? I think that's a very good differential diagnosis. Could this be polypoidal associated with packy choroid? Uh, that would probably be a little too boring, even though I said it's reinforcing my talk. And so let's have a look at the ICG. No, 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 it was good. So for, we, did, we did the ICG to look for polyps. We agreed that that was a possibility. And the ICG tells us everything. Ooh, uh... Thoughts? Name? I think... Um, yeah, polypoidal. Mandeep, I think you're collecting a series of these, aren't you? I think you're, this is contributing to your series. But this is the only one I've got that actually leaked. But this is an absolute beaut, and we've treated this, so this could be the first one that ever needed treatment. So, um, and they're usually bilateral. And so the OCT here, this is the herniating large choroidal vessel in Hallis layer <coughs> poking through. And if we, we OCT it, you can actually follow this lumen all the way, snaking through here. And where it's herniating, 
it's causing RPE reaction on the top and a CSR-like change. So this is, to me, a proper uh, macro vessel, not a packy vessel. I hate it. So, yeah, we talked about the terminology this morning. Um, they're often bilateral, but actually this, this gentleman doesn't have one on the other side. Um, how many were bilateral in your case series? Most were unilateral. Okay. Wow. I'll take it all back. I said they're often bilateral. <laughs> so I'm now corrected by the definitive uh, Segu paper. <laughs> Yeah. The only other series is from Wills. I think five cases they were. So we trumped Wills. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you because they got treated uh, six weeks ago. I, I, when I come back, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> PDT. Yeah. I, I do think I could laser that. That's a wide ball wow. thing. I have no idea what what it'll do to it. But um, um, it, oh, oh that's, that's just another example of it. We've, well, I covered the whole of the area. I don't think we're not going to close down the whole thing. No more than I will with normal CSR. I th we gave, we were, the patients had months, months to think about doing nothing versus trying something. I'm happy to think of any alternatives. So that's it, 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. <coughs>